Chatbots, chatbots, everyone's been talking about chatbots. Companies like Facebook and Slack have introduced chatbots, which they say can be used for making reservations, buying things, ordering food, searching for items, etc. So what exactly are these chatbots? A chatbot is an intelligent computer program that has the ability to chat with humans. For example, if you want to order pizza, the bot will give you options based on your previous buying behavior whether you're veg or non-veg, whether you like cheese or dislike jalapenos, or based on the deals that are available for the day. Chatbots present a new opportunity and these are very early days. We really don't know how it's all going to shape up. So we spoke to a few pioneers. So what we essentially help people do is that uh, through fully automated bots, let them have a human-like chat experience in their own natural language, where they come and ask anything that they really want without being constrained by the system. Uh, and let them get to a decision point. A lot of human nature that is there, right, is lost in a bot. A classic example is when you call a customer service center, right, people don't like an IVR, right? IVR is a chatbot. A chatbot basically on a voice system is an IVR, right? Where he's telling that if you want one, two, three, you press one. People don't like it. It is extremely inhuman. It's extremely robotic. But an inherent chat, a WhatsApp chat, right, has got empathy built in. There are spelling mistakes in the, in the guy that is that is uh, responding back, right? Immediately it builds, builds empathy. That I know there's another person there, right? I'll be more, you know, more forgiving. I'll be more whatever, right? So there's all those interactions that happen. The bot kills it. Most of the options that we have today are very card based in the sense are very form based, right? There is a form that we are traveling Bangalore to Bombay 28th of May. However, when you ask, uh, you know, what's your flight preference? People will say, I want a morning flight on Saturday. That's exactly where the artificial intelligence part comes in. Some cases are there, some cases have already been built. Like if I want to say go from here to Singapore on a flight, Google has built a very nice engine, right? He will tell you, if you, if you move your uh, journey by a day, you save 8,000 bucks, right? They will have their space, but I think a large space will still be dictated by booking engine. Chatbots might be a, a, a large thing on the, on the tech front, right? People might be very excited about it, but a user is really is only bothered about is it is it a better way that's it and there are a lot of cases we believe that is a better way chatbots are a better way but a lot of cases they're not right so so i think the the, the euphoria is a little overstated if you go and see websites that were made in 95 you'll be like what the hell is this right even you know people are learning html don't write shit like that today right but which is what the bots are today but i think in two to three years we'll have extremely intelligent systems which will be uh, you know doing a lot of very good stuff. While it's become common to read about startups in trending categories like chatbots, transportation or food tech, here's a startup that has a vision to make India a better place. For example, this morning on one of the WhatsApp groups, uh, there's been a story circulating about this 11 year old girl, 11 or 12 year old girl in Calcutta modern high school getting molested. And uh, one of my cousins who circulated the story says, I'm sure it doesn't happen in Bangalore. Since then, about 10 or 11 other people have said it happens in Bangalore, it happens in Sapaya School, it happens in Mount Carmel, it happens. Then somebody from Bombay said it happens here also, right? And it's been happening for 25 years. What's somebody doing about it? Just sharing it on WhatsApp? Is that going to improve things? So my vote is a platform where we can raise issues, we can raise concerns that matter or matters that concern and ask what action can be taken, ask people's opinion. So we had a, a user who wrote in to us, uh, he said that he's being asked for a bribe in the Bangalore RTO office. So we jumped in, we spoke to the RTO. The person who asked for a bribe was suspended pending inquiry and apart from that, the person uh, who had complained, the complainant received his check of 85,000 rupees within three days time at his home. So that's the kind of impact we're talking about over here. And additionally, you know, he, he actually 
tweeted about this and he put it on his Facebook post saying I don't I don't believe I'm still in India. The summer is actually unbearable, right? It's so hot and you know cities like Bangalore people are saying it's not going to be there in 5 years time. The water bodies have cut down 80% and it's just ridiculous. So, and like the Swachh Bharat campaign, we believe that each Indian should plant 5 trees every year. And collectively we'll be having adding so much green cover that obviously the climate and everything will be more bearable and as a country we'll be in a much better place. That petition can be signed live on the app right now. You walk into a nearby hypermarket and you see at least two billing counters occupied by startups that deliver groceries. Now they work like a concierge service where you use their app to list out whatever you want and these guys go to the nearest shop and deliver it home. And why would you do this? More than the convenience, it's about the deep discounts that they offer. These companies were growing at a fast pace, raising money, adding more cities, only to realize that it wasn't working. Some have closed operations in certain cities, while some have shut shop. The latest to do so is Peppertap, who raised about $40 million from marquee investors. This again proves that solid business fundamentals and unit economics, or for that matter, common sense prevails over discounted, hyper-funded models in the long run. More often than not, when the cars we drive have a problem, we go to the nearest service center and we get ripped off. Sir, brake pad, brake rotor, headlight, window lift motor, motor mount, brake caliper, brake shoes, brake drum, brake disc, brake line, brake hose, lift support, coolant recovery tank. Now, ending this problem are startups in the space of car maintenance and repair. Bumper extension, brake cap, brake step pad, bumper molding, fender protector, fender molding. So now, we have two startups. One an aggregator, another one a service provider. Discuss this. If you look at the structure of the market, what, what I'm looking at is saying, hey, there are a bunch of customers who want their cars or vehicles to be serviced, could be bikes tomorrow, and there are a bunch of service providers who are trying to service it. Now, they are inefficient in, in, in the current model because of two or three reasons. And we've got to like understand it as a platform. Because as a platform, what you really need to do is not only look at the customers, but also look at the vendor side and really develop them. Uh, uh, you, uh, customers, they don't get an honest garage. They, they don't they get a trustworthy garage anymore. So we are here to provide that. Our way of uh, delivery would be like uh, as a doorstep service. But basically, we are a mobile car garage. We are a car garage, full-fledged car garage. So we do all side kind of services at home. We have amazing uh, UI with an app. You can book your car for service in 30 seconds. So, the, and, and we give warranty and with all, all the bells and whistles basically. At the end, we don't do an apple to apple comparison of how much our service would cost and how much a dealer service would cost. But you will end up saving almost like 30%, 20 to 30% on uh, money and probably like so much time on uh, time. Because uh, periodic services, we, we turn around in like 90 minutes flat. So, I, in the, you give it to a dealership or you give it to a garage, it probably takes a day, a day and a half. Many of them have their heart in the right place and probably may not want to rip you off, but they just don't know what's the right, the right way to go about it. When you take your car to an experienced mechanic or, your, um, or an authorized service centre, your experience is superb because um, he'll immediately tell you, Sir, this is a car in the Sandro car, it's a very old fuel pump issue. He'll immediately repair your fuel pump the same day you have your car back, you don't spend too much money, you're happy. Right? And that's what we're trying to deliver. Similar to Stephanie, but there are approach is different from uh, what they are taking. We wanted to be the service provider and we wanted to make sure the quality is there uh, from us itself. The, the duty of a platform right, doesn't end with just connecting customers and vendors and saying, hey, I'm done. I think it, it, it also uh, should encompass defining the rules of governance on the platform. It should also encompass how do you build the customer and how do you build the vendor and then focus on both equally, otherwise the platform is going to be unstable. If you turned away from Mintra because they were app only, you were among the 30% that did not use the mobile app, or 50% that did not complete a transaction on the mobile app, or for that matter, among the 100% that did not ask for an opinion. A little late, but better late than never, hasta la vista baby. While we reflect on all the good things that happen at startups and how we'll change the world, there is also a dark aspect to it. This came to light when a techie in Hyderabad committed suicide failing to build an app that was better than WhatsApp. It's not only the founders, but also the employees at startups who go into depression at times. If you look closely, you'll find that they are all around you. Now, this is a medical condition that requires proper treatment. Any one of you watching this show willing to take up something like this? One of our fans asked this question on Twitter. As a bootstrap startup, do you keep marketing functions in-house or outsource them? 
Yeah, I think advertising is straight away a no. You just can't afford <clears throat> even as a startup or a bootstrap startup. That's even more difficult. Sales and marketing, I see for startups is a core function. So it's very, very important because more, it's easy to make products, but difficult to sell them <laughs> or a service or whatever. So if you look at it, a core thing, the closer you keep it to yourself, you should have skills in-house. But you do not have the luxury when you're too early. So it depends <clears throat> at what stage are you in. Typically very early, what will work is only online digital marketing, which again, you are not doing any ad spend, but rather SEO driven or content marketing driven inbound traffic that you can get. And that's the best way to market. Uh, again, that will vary. It's not like one answer will fit all. We are a B2B company. So for us, uh, social media marketing or marketing per se itself is a different ball game. Uh, so we've spent more on direct marketing rather than concentrating more on social media marketing because I don't want housewives to come and follow my brand on Facebook or LinkedIn or somewhere else and uh, we try to keep it in-house. Certain things as a gap filler you can always uh, or certain things like creating content, graphics, just amplifying your content what you have created further into different social media, those kind of non-critical activities you can outsource. So that's typically how you should look and balance the thing. But there's a very thin line in over-marketing or uh, getting labeled as a spammer. So you won't like to pay someone, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 or 1 lakh rupee to spam <laughs> with your brand name. It's very, very critical. You have to be, uh, you have to take the call based on how much money you have in your pocket. But keep all the thinking and the key stuff inside uh, within your own people. For last week's contest, we asked you to identify both the logos of startups in the image and the lucky winner is Bharat Naik. Congratulations, you won yourselves Denture Capital Original Merchandise. Here's this week's contest. Unscramble the letters and identify this very popular entrepreneur. The contest winner will win a free service from Karista for summer proofing your car. We at Denture Capital are looking for hustlers. You could be a fresh graduate, you could be a college student, or you could have never gone to school. We don't really care. Airbag inspector, element, tailgate, cable, accelerator, pedal bushing, floor shifter, lift gate, strap, rack and pinion bushing. All that we look for is the hustle DNA. So if you're interested, write to us on hustle at DentureCapital.in. Keep hustling and stay ambitious.